Thank you for this wonderful song. I'm sure all of you have a feeling that it's like, you know, I was not expecting to have this privilege of welcoming Swami Chetananji Maharaj here in Hollywood, beyond my wildest imaginations. It's there. We welcome him on behalf of Vedanta Society, all the devotees. We have today Swamiji here, and a few minutes ago he was telling me about how in 1971 he had come here from India, and he was here for almost seven years. It's been 50 years that he's were living and working in the United States of America. And what work! He's got more than 20 books in English and in Bengali, and he's written scores of articles. He's got audios and videos, DVDs. It's been a kind of a very fruitful 50 years. It speaks about a kind of an intellectual stamina, a devotion to Sri Ramakrishna that helps generate such literature. I myself have been enriched by reading books written by Maharaj, and I'm sure that millions of people have been benefited and enriched. Their spiritual life has been enhanced because of these, this vast literature. Every movement has the wheels of literature, spiritual literature. Every spiritual movement runs on literature. And we are happy and we pray that the Lord keeps Swami Chetananji Maharaj in good health for many, many, many more years so we can have many, many, many more books. Thank you, Maharaj. Krishna Madhuram Tava Satcharitram Pat Punna Nama Madhuram Madhuram Tadangam Sambhasanam Samadhuram Madhuram Saganam Tat Kimnu Janna Madhuram Bhavati Tvadiyam O Ramakrishna <laughs> Your life story is sweet. Your name is sweet. Your form is beautiful. Your singing is sweet. In your conversation is sweet. <clears throat> is there anything, O oh Lord, which is devoid of sweetness in you? Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. <coughs> peace, peace, peace be in full. <coughs> Hollywood was my first home in America. I reached Kennedy Airport 8th June 1971. Came to Hollywood 11th June 1971. Stayed here nearly seven years with Swami Prabhavananda five years. Then Swami Shohananda another one year, few months. <coughs> I still remember when I first came to Hollywood. All the time some festivity was going on. So many monks, nuns, devotees. The temple was packed. People would sit on the floor. Most of them <laughs> are Americans, one or two Indians. 
at that time. <coughs> I am very happy that it is God's grace I got a chance to serve American people last 50 years. One of my friends asked, the maximum time <coughs> Swami Sarvagatanandaji lived 55 years, Boston Swami. Swami Prabhupada 53 years in America. Swami Bibidishanandaji, I think 51 or 52 years. <coughs> and I reached 50 years. So it is a God's grace that I got a chance to serve people here. <coughs> <coughs> Today, my topic, Sri Ramakrishna, a divine life in pictures. Today, I, no, I shall not lecture. I shall only tell you about the book. This is the book I shall about to tell you. <coughs> Sri Ramakrishna, a divine life in pictures. <coughs> Our last generations, they emphasized Vedanta, the universal teachings of Vedanta. Time to time, they talked about Sri Ramakrishna, Holy Mother, Swamiji. <coughs> but they mainly emphasized on the Vedanta, the universal aspects. Then they wanted to know that who experienced this Vedanta, so they presented Veda Murti Sri Ramakrishna. As you know, Swami Nikhilananda's Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, <coughs> translated in 1942, created a tremendous impact in the Western world. That book has been translated into so many languages. Then <coughs> I came, of course, I am Prabhupada, his Gita and his works with Christopher Isharuj also spread. Prabhupada <coughs> told me, we do not go every place, but our books work for us, our literature. It reaches to the intellectual people all over the world. It is God's grace. <coughs> I had, please try to watch Ramakrishna be become the literature. Here is the gospel. <coughs> then came Ramakrishna's divine play, Lila Prasangas. Then Ramakrishna they saw him. They lived with God. God lived with them. How to live with God, with God in the company of Ramakrishna? Ramakrishna, the, how to see God in the open eyes? Then <coughs> came this book. So these seven books, which I were God's master's grace, I had a chance to do. These seven books and the gospel, Try to imagine how much information about Thakur came to the Western world. It is very, very important, extremely important. <coughs> about this book, <laughs> <coughs> In April 19, sorry, 2018, I started this project. It took three years. It is a group of American people with their ingenuity worked. There are 
232 pages with 639 photographs. We have only three photographs of Sri Ramakrishna. How much work be to make this Sri Ramakrishna's life living? A lot of work. We went to the best preachers in the North America prisons in Canada. Spent $60,000. But I have full satisfaction about this production. <clears throat> you will feel the gravity, the history of this book. There will be a tremendous impact in the minds of the people. When you go, when you read this book and see the pictures, you will go 150 years back, you will live with Ramakrishna. That we want, how to live with God. Before we start, I shall tell you, we made some brochure, <coughs> Ramakrishna's, a book like no other. <coughs> this pictorial biography of Sri Ramakrishna gathers together 639 images, including many rare archival photographs. Ramakrishna's divine life is portrayed through photos and narratives, allowing readers to visualize the people and places connected throughout his life. Ramakrishna's innumerable devotees and admirers all over the world will be able to experience his divine play without leaving home. I shall talk about it, what I meant, without leaving home. <clears throat> Ramakrishna's come to life. <clears throat> The hundreds of evocative images in this book will leave hundreds of indelible impressions in the reader's minds. Ramakrishna's life, message, and divine play with his disciples and devotees come to life in this pictorial. These rare and precious images allow readers to meditate on him with their eyes open. When there is no desire to practice Japa and meditation, the wonderful pictures and the stories of this book will transport readers to a higher spiritual plane and help them to enjoy the company of Ramakrishna, just as a painter puts several coats of paint onto an object. This pictorial will apply several coats of devotion onto the minds of devotees so that they may constantly recollect the of Ramakrishna. When we think about Ramakrishna, we think about two books, Gospel and the, and the Ramakrishna and the Divine Play, Aim and Sarudananda. These two books, if you ask me, they did not write it. It is Ramakrishna wrote through them. Gospel is the unique religious literature in the whole world. No avatar's life has been recorded in, the, in that way. No way. And Ramakrishna's divine play. After 23 years of Ramakrishna's passing away, Swami Sharadananda started to write about it. Oof, that is so deep, magnanimous, some wonderful biography of Sri Ramakrishna. Descriptive authentic, comprehensive biography. 
When religion declines, religion prevails, God incarnates. <laughs> we know Rama, Krishna, Buddha, Jesus, Muhammad, Chaitanya, Rama, Krishna, one after another. Each, <laughs> each person comes to fulfill their mission. Sri Ramakrishna came to this age, harmony of religions. Each avatar comes with a specific mission. Rama came, established the truth. Krishna came, established dharma. Buddha came, established ahimsa. Jesus came, established love. Chaitanya also love. Ramakrishna, what is needed in this age? That he gave. Universal religion. That is Vedanta. You see, if you want to form any kind of religion, you need three things. God, a personal God, a prophet, and a book. Without these three, you cannot form any kind of religion. Without Bible, without Jesus, without God, there is no Christianity. Without Muhammad, without Quran, without Allah, there is no Islam. Read that book, article of Swamiji, is Vedanta the future religion. Swamiji talked about it. Universal religion. Vedanta has no personal God. Brahman, impersonal. Second, there is no particular prophet in Vedanta. Third, there is no particular book in Vedanta. Universal. <clears throat> Anyhow, just to tell you that how, what Sri Ramakrishna's and Vivekananda's contribution to this present age. And each of other comes and, <coughs> and plays the divine drama. And in this drama, you will find good, bad, all kinds of people must be there. All good people cannot form a drama, or all bad people cannot form a drama. You need interaction between good and evil. When we read the Gospel of Ramakrishna, what we see? <laughs> Ramakrishna's companions, equally saints and sinners, agnostics and atheists, devotees and gyanis, rich and poor, drunkards and prostitutes, critics and hypocrites, actors and singers, students and teachers, judges and lawyers, doctors and scholars, among others. We, when we read the Gospel of Ramakrishna, we find something Something going on all the time, exciting. <clears throat> so this pictorial biography, which is the main focus. We want to see Sri Ramakrishna singing, dancing, crying, laughing, human. When God takes a human form, he acts like human. That you will find in this book. <clears throat> We generally connect ourselves through God through seeing and hearing. Seeing is more effective than hearing. For example, you have seen, many of you have seen Ramananda Sagar's Ramayana. Beautiful. Audiovisual. If you hear only Ramayana, one effect. But if you want to see Ramayana acting and hearing, more effect. So that I try to bring in this book so that you can visualize. <clears throat> Imagination. Walt Disney, when he built the Disneyland, do you know what he said? There is no end to human imagination. Imagination becomes realization. So when I was working this book, I was imagining each photo, each incident, each episode, each person connected with Sri Ramakrishna. And then when I imagine, I see the picture, then I was thinking that what narration can go with it. Here is a photo, caption, narration. Photo, caption, narration. Do you know what does it mean? It means the moment you were reading that episode and seeing that picture, your mind will absorb you, Sri Ramakrishna. 
I was telling some of our devotees, those who are initiated, disciples who initiated with Ramakrishna mantra, this book will be their companion. Do you know why? The day your mind is not working. Our mind goes up and down, so we know it. Just open this book. You will get back. You will get connection with Sri Ramakrishna instantly. <clears throat> In the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 11, verse 54, Bhakta tu ananya saitu, ahame bambi dorjuno, gyatum drastum cha, tatti na pravishtum cha parantapa. Which is a beautiful mantra. Through love, ananya bhakta, man anjivajit love. What happens? Krishna says, gyatum, you can know God. Drushtum, you can see God. Prabhishtum, you can enter God. This book will help you to enter God. Help you to know God, see God, enter God. Three things. Those who read the Bhagavad Gita, watch. From chapter 7 to 10, 7, 8, 9, 10, 44 chapters, Gyatum, you can know God, what God is. In the 11th chapter, Drushtum, you can see God, the cosmic form of God. In the 12th chapter, Prabhishtum, love, Bhakti Yoga, you enter God. Watch carefully the Bhagavad Gita. Prabhishtum, how can we enter God? You know, the other day I was reading Swami Vishuddhananda's reminiscence. Do you know what he said? He was telling Pavitrananda, in the early days, I was trying to put my mind to God. Now, I see God is coming to me. I do not make any effort. That struck me. That is called Provishtum. God entered inside. And when God enters inside, do you know what happens? You will float in bliss. You will be carried away the current of bliss. That I wanted to bring in this book. When some people come and ask me, could you tell me that how can I get devotion, love for God? Common question. Do you know what comes to my mind? Sri Ramakrishna in Radha Bazar photographic studio. The cameraman was explaining, do you see this negative? Glass negative at that time, there was no film negative in 1881. Here is a silver nitrate emulsion. Here, impression remains, photograph. And then from this negative, I can make any number of pictures, photographs. Immediately, Sri Ramakrishna went into Shamadi. <coughs> he said, my goodness, if a person's mind is covered with a coating of devotion, in that coating, you can have an impression of God and you can see God anytime you like. Those who are real devotees, they have so much impressions of God in the mind. So when they close his eyes, they see God. That is called Prabhishtum. God entered inside you. That was in my mind. These 639 photographs will give you 639 impressions and make a deep coating of emulsion, of devotion. And you will see Ramakrishna is, is luminous form of Ramakrishna in your mind. 
I remember in our village, my mother used to make mango pulp. You know what do they do? It's, hey, this is this May June mango season. A lot of mangoes. It will be rotted and thrown away. So she will make mango and squeeze it and the pulp. And here is a mat, one layer. Put it in the sun, dry. Next day, more mangoes, another layer. First layer, you can see the mat. Second layer, you can see the mat. Third layer, you will see the mat. Then when it becomes this thick, you cannot see the mat, mat anymore. At that time, it is dry. So she will cut into pieces and put it into a container. So that when the mango season is over, then that would be our dessert. In our village, dessert will be rice, milk, molasses, and mango pulp. You know, when I was thinking that how layers can work on human mind, devotion, love for God. Same thing we find in the painter. When you paint some wood, what do you do? First prime, one coat, two coats, three coats. Then you cannot see the wood anymore. The wood is protected from water or from weather. Coating, coating, coating. That was in my mind. When we see each picture, one impression. Next picture, another impression. In this way, 639 coatings will be on your mind. <coughs> Another thing. Sitting in the living room, many of our American devotees have never seen India. But they read Ramakrishna. So this book will bring Ramakrishna in your living room. Sitting in a couch, open this book, you will see Dakshineshwar, Kamarpuku, Jarambati, Balloon March, the playground of Sri Ramakrishna, Dakshineshwar. Let me finish, then I shall come with that Dokshinishar, about Dokshinishar. <clears throat> Human beings cherish sweet and joyful memories. Devotees of God love to think of their beloved Lord. They cannot help it. Krishna left Vrindavan and went to Mathura, but he sent his cousin and disciple, Uddhava, to console his foster parents, Nanda and Jashoda, and his devotees. On behalf of the people of Vrindavan, Nanda expressed their feelings of Uddhava. Oh, my dear, all our activities stop when we think of Krishna's heroic deeds, his boyful, his boyish playfulness, his loving glances, his sweet smile, and his charming words. Our minds are absorbed in Krishna. When you see his playground, the banks of Yamuna, Govardhan Hill, the forest of Vrindavan, all of which were touched by the blessed feet of Krishna. That I wanted to bring in this book. I remember when I was here, Jim Gates, during Christmas time, presented me a book in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. Still that book I have. What the Christians did. From his birth to death, every step they photographed, each places. It is a journey. A true Christian is moving with Christ. That I wanted to bring in this book. That I wanted. Now, <clears throat> now my adventure. First, I'll have to take that 
pictures, history of the picture of Sri Ramakrishna. Sri Ramakrishna's first picture was taken in 1879 at Keshav Sen's house, Kamal Kuchur, Kamal Kuchir, Calcutta. It was a Brahma festival, Thakur was invited, and Keshav invited Bengal photographers to take pictures of this whole function. Sri Ramakrishna was completely unaware of it. What happened? With Trilokunath Sandal, Chiranjeev Sharma, he started to sing. And hearing his devotional song, Sri Ramakrishna, Om, 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 and he stood up and went into Samadhi. That picture you see, and, and Rida, Sri Ramakrishna's nephew held him so that the master may not fall down. So what happened, at that time, the Bengal photographers took this picture, 1879. Second <coughs> picture was taken in 1881 that I told in Radha studio, Thakur went to see. The third photograph, the shrine pose, cross-legged, Sri Ramakrishna was seated. Sri Ramakrishna did not allow anybody to take his pictures. All three pictures of Sri Ramakrishna came when he was in Samadhi. Samadhi has never been photographed. Do you know what it does mean? At that time, that person is God, one with God. So that, what is called, Bhavanath. Bhavanath wanted a picture. He, he brought his friend, Obinas Da, Baranagur, with camera, and wanted to take picture. But Shamiji said, hey, don't tell anything to the master. We shall go. They went to the Krishna temple, northwest corner, Sri Ramakrishna said, it is nine or 10 o'clock in the morning, and then Sri Ramakrishna was talking, went into Samadhi, at that time that photograph was taken. Later on, <coughs> Sri Ramakrishna's face was a little down, so the photographer was trying to lift his chin a little up. Immediately his whole body was up, it was light. So light, the whole body up. Shamiji said, don't touch his body. Just go, take the picture right now. The camera which took the pictures, it is now in Shampukur house. You will find in this book. Kodak camera. Even the tray, the picture was printed. That also in this book, you will find it. I documented. So that the future generation will never think Ramakrishna is a myth. Hundreds and thousands of years may go. You see, do you know, let me tell you one thing. When Arnold Toynbee, the British, photo, British music historian, was writing the world's history, he said, Rama and Krishna, we don't think they are historical figures, mythological figures. History begins when Buddha starts. We see the edicts of Buddha. I need tangible things, otherwise I cannot write the history. That is the reason I worked on this book. Thousands of years may go, Ramakrishna will not be myth or imagination. At these photographs, as I already said, no avatar's photograph has been taken. Krishna, Buddha, Ramakrishna, Jesus, all are imaginations. All the pictures and the stone image, sculptures you see, imagination. But Ramakrishna's picture, we exactly know how it looked like. So that is the third photograph taken. Then Ramdatta brought a photographer and showed him. Sri Ramakrishna said, am I so angry? Then Ramakrishna, Ramdatta said, the master did not approve it. He took the photograph and the negative and threw it into the Ganges. So we do not know that a photograph. And two photographs taken after Sri Ramakrishna's passing away. Dr. Mandralal Sarkar gave money, 10 rupees. These photographs we have. We do not show them because Master was emaciated. So in this book, you will find you covered with flowers. The devotees will get hurt. So we do not show these death pictures. So. <laughs>
my adventures. As I told you, I joined the monastery in 1960, 28th February, Sri Ramakrishna's birthday. So after one or two years, I became the in charge of the photo department. But I did not know how to use camera. I used to go to the studio, give them negative, take prints, sell them. That was my job. So one Swami gave me, <coughs> gave me a camera. He went to Koilash. Then, after a week, he took away the camera. I said, Maharaj, why I did not want you gave and you took away? Do you know why? I, want, I do not want to ruin your monastic life. <laughs> I go, why? This camera is a very expensive job, expensive hobby. You will have to buy film, you will have to develop it, you will have to do all these things, you will have to beg money from the devotees. I don't want that. I go, Maharaj, you saved my life. <laughs> After later on, I have many, many cameras. <laughs> <clears throat> Anyhow, then when I came to Hollywood, I did a lot of research. I went to Caltech. That one devotee, I come, they can, they work for NASA. They took Sri Ramakrishna's picture and I want to see Thakur's eyes, whether it is closed or open, what? They, they have millions of Giant women, they can expand any way they can do it, my goodness. I have still a bunch of their experiments on Ramakrishna in Caltech in the 1970s. I got it. Still, I have some. <coughs> I was doing research in California. <laughs> then what happened in 1977? I was in Hollywood. <coughs> July, I went to India for four months. It is Swami Krishnananda. Gave me 50 rolls of films. <laughs> Kodachrome 64 ASA, still I know. Kodachrome 64 ASA, one Konica camera, one Pentax camera. Brother gave me, I went to India. Then I, do you know what was in my mind? That I wanted to bring slides. I wanted to give slideshow to show our American devotees, those who have not visited Kamarpur, Belurma, Dokshineshwar, or other Indian holy places. John and Lowry Hench gave me carousel projector. So I used to see, show those things in Hollywood Temple. All over I showed my slideshow. I met. Rani Rashmuni's eldest daughter, Padma Muni's great-grandson. Grandson or great-grandson? Ashutosh Das. He was our neighbor in Advaita Ashrama. He was an attorney. And he was a trustee of Dakshineshwar. So I went there, uncle, I have, I have come to you. I have a desire to photograph the Dakshineshwar, Kali, Krishna, deities, everything I want to photograph. Sure, I shall give you permission. So he gave me permission. The Dokshinishan manager was with me. I took extensively photographs. Then, 1982, I went to India. Same, brother Krishnananda gave money, developing everything Krishnananda page. 86, 90, then 96, 98, 2001, 2004, 2007. These times I took only Kotakrom and two, three cameras. Whole India, do you know what? Nearly 10,000 slides. One devotee from Chicago, digitalized it. That helped me to produce this book. Dokshineshwar has changed, Kamar Pugu changed, Jaramaji changed. But I want to take you to the time when Sri Ramakrishna was there. That is his playground, 30 years he played in Dakshinisha Temple Garden. Try to think of that, 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 that courtyard, those tiles, Sri Ramakrishna walked over there. 
God in human form walked over that. The Kali, Krishna, Sri Ramakrishna worship. I want to bring that vivid things in the minds of the Javujis. That you will find in this book. When you see any picture, 1977, remember, those are all my things. And moreover, San Francisco archives, Hollywood, Strubu, Adhita Ashrama, Udbodhan, Belunmat, Kamarpugu, Jayanambati, all these archives, pictures I brought. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> Let me tell you my another <coughs> story. In 1982, I was in Culture Institute, so Swami Prabhanandaji said, you know, Brujokisho Sina, the curator of the British Museum in Calcutta, Victoria Memorial Hall, he has the negative. He went to Udbudun, and the original photograph which mother worshipped, he took negatives of that. So I went to his home. I still remember, 32 Ashutosh Mukherjee Road, South Calcutta. I knocked at his door, he came with the mustache. Uncle Adu Bajokisha Sina, yes. I told him that why I came to him. Uncle, will you give me these negatives? I shall make print and I shall return. No, 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 you will not have to return. Those things are yours. I brought it. Then I gave to, I called John Hens. You see, he was the vice president of the Disneyland and Creative Edge. He's one of the best artists in the world. All the Mickey Mouse you see, all are done by John. So John, Uncle John, will have to now, you will not have to now work for Chakur. I gave the negative, he enlarged it. And then he worked two years. Laudi told me, Swami, he bought one brush, one hair, so that he can preserve Sri Ramakrishna's beard. That picture, we sell. It's really, you know, it's... Look, this is the face of that picture. It is all John Hinch. American people. They work for Thakur. Then I am so happy, so happy that we got Thakur. Then do you know what? It was in 1969, before I came to this country. Swami Ishanan, the mother's disciple, had the original photograph of Holy Mother, which was taken in 1898. That original photo I have. I shall show you. Mm, what is the matter? 77. Mother's Shoroshi Puja. This is the original photograph of the Holy Mother, untouched. You can see her hair, face, everything. That you will find in this book. And I have the Swamiji's original photographs, which was taken in 1896 in London, meditation. Even his eyelashes can be visible. John Hinch worked on that. You know, I had a desire that if people, you people worship in your shrine, we want to give you the best photographs so that you can see. This is second generation photograph. Anyhow. I'm just telling you my research. <laughs> I am grateful for John Lewis, who did 10,000 slides, each one digitalized. Only American people have this kind of oof, ingenuity and patience and oof, hard work. That is the basis of this book. And Diane Marshall, she is my graphic artist. She did, you see, 
do you know how? <laughs> Nobody taught me how to do this kind of book. It is easy to write a book, but it is not easy to write a pictorial. First, you have to visualize a scene, photographs, caption, narration. Then these things will go to my editor. Editor will edit it. Then it go to two more persons who will read the proof and check everything. Then it will come to me. Then it will go to the graphic artist. He will put the picture and he will lay out. Oh, Diane Marshall told me, Swami, thousands of hours I spent. Thousands of these American people, thousands of hours meditation. So I told Diane, you know, a monks go to Uttarkashi Rishikesh for tapasya. You did the tapasya in front of the computer. And your tapasya, austerity, will help millions and millions of people all over the world. Sacrifice of the American people. Their meditation, their contribution. It is a teamwork. Then comes George, our, he is, does the final work, then it goes to the printer. Now I shall tell you some of the highlights of this book. First, you have seen the cover. This picture was taken in 1881, Thakur's face, that green coat. That coat is still in balloon mud. And Thakur's face and Dakshinesha Temple Garden and the Ganges, as if Thakur is coming out from the Ganges to sanctify the humanity. Then in the back, near Kamar Pukur, there is a lake. So calm, many ripples, no waves. That should be the mind of a yogi. If your mind is calm, God will reflect there. Yoga Shitta Vritti Nirodha. That I put. Water, water. Then, generally, do you know what do they do? This page, generally, they keep, keep it blank. I go, no, 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 no. Put Shardham, four important abodes of Ramakrishna. First, Kamat Pukur. Do you see? There is a water in front. Then Dakshineshwar is playground for 30 years, water in front. Then, right side, you see, Kashipur Garden House, where Sri Ramakrishna passed away and Jesus last play. Water in front, then balloon mud. Water in front. I did it so that <coughs> so that you you know instead of blank pages you see there is something. Then page twenty three. It is Diane's creation that Sri Ramakrishna Samadhi, how the cranes are flying with dark, dark clouds behind. It is, I told him, do this way. How Thakur's first got his Samadhi when he was a little boy. Then, mango orchard. Somebody was, my friend told me, I said, Swami, how did you get Prasunnamoyi's picture? She recognized Thakur as an avatar, God, when very early days. Hey, you are not ordinary human being. You, you know, God reveals himself to those who are real devotees. <laughs> We wanted to show the British India. 
that Ramakrishna's time, you know, do you know what Dhyan did? He did research. He went to the British, he went to the Library of Congress, Bri British Museum, all over the world. Now internet is a boon. Internet can, can show you anything. See, he collected all these things, the internet. Sometimes we had to pay. Dokshineshwar, <laughs> British Calcutta, Sira, Swami Vidyatmananda, this American Swami. I remember. He came in 1950s once, he came in, he came for Sanyas in 1963, Swamiji's centenary time. I helped him. He was working. Ramakrishna's teachings illustrated, which you will find Vedanta in the West, issue 171. He stayed in Kamarpuku Janambati area, going to the villages. But Western people cannot visualize Ramakrishna's teachings. So he took these pictures and showed. He did a marvelous work. We are very close, very close. 171 issue of the <laughs> wonderful things he did. He, he, even he measured the, the height of the Kali. We do not dare to do that. American people are so brave. <laughs> it is 33 and a half inches. A Ramakrishna's statue in Belur Do you know how high is the master from the, from the altar? Three feet. You know, I brought in this book so details, Sri Ramakrishna's room in Kamarpukur, length, width, height, three sides, mud wall floor, mud floor, one door, one window. The infinite God was living there. Shh. I tell you frankly, those things, it, you, you will feel nostalgic feeling that, oof, I am with Ramakrishna. That is the reason that this book is so important. It is with that full picture of our John Hens did it. What is the 23rd of the old British and sold at the Arcus Room, 1950. Arcus Room, 37. I tell you one thing, 1937. When I first went to Dokshineshwar, most probably May, June, 1950, I was 14 years old. My brother took me there. At that time, the floor was cement floor, red cement. There is no barrier, a clear. I still remember, every week I used to go there and meditate near the court of Sri Ramakrishna, facing east. Oof, evening time, big, big mosquitoes. <laughs> Oof, it was like a syringe, will take the blood from your body. <laughs> I still remember my days. But do you know what happened? In 1955, during the centenary of Dokshinesha Temple Garden, they removed that cement floor and put mosaic. And they started to change. I did not like it. I did not like it. <laughs> I tried to get old pictures, new pictures, as much as I can. Dukshineshwar Kamar Pugu Jarambaji. Another thing I wanted to show you. You see, <coughs> I'm telling you the mystery. Some pictures came straight from the digital camera. Some pictures came black and white, old photographs. Some pictures came from slides. Some pictures came from paintings. 
some pictures came from other things, you know, some sketches, all kinds of imagery to bring and bring the color, be difficult. Black and white picture, do you know what giant did? Duotone, he injected another color inside. If you want to test it, see this, these two photographs. These are the two photographs of Dakshineshwar Panchavati. Those trees are gone, those pedestals, there's, everything is gone. How much play Sri Ramakrishna plays on, the, on this, under this tree? Boy, Totapuri live there, so much information are in these two trees. When you take this book, these two pages, you go in the sun, you will find there is color. Actually, it is black and white. One Swami, San Francisco, took one picture in 1935. As you know, as I wrote, Dakshineshwar Panchavati about 1930. One day in the Panchavati, the master bowed down to the spot where a branch of the old banyan tree had fallen. He said to him, I had so many divine visions here. Please bow down at this place. It is in the gospel. The other side of the Dakshineshwar Panchavati, Vivekananda Remini said, oh, what weird scenes, things bring before me, the weirdest scenes of my whole life. Perfect silence, broken only by the cries of the jackals. In the darkness, under the great tree of Dakshineshwar, night after night, we sat there the whole night through, and he, Ramakrishna, talked to me when I was a boy. You know, these things touches my heart. Immediately when I see these things, you know, immediately I am absorbed there with Ram Krishna. I'm just telling you that what is the importance of this pictorial, your mind will be connected with Thakur. Kamarpur, Panchavati, two scenes, bell tree. That bell tree is gone. Ramlala is all stolen. This is the Ramlala. Eight metallic images which was stolen. No more there. Then, 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 Holy Mother's original I showed. Ram Krishna's collections of the photos. When, mm, 76. 76. Do you know what happened? In Ram Krishna's room, on the wall, all these pictures are there. Kali, Tara, Kali, Tara, Shodashi, Chaitanya, Dhruva, Ramchandra, Krishna. So, then Jesus Christ rescuing Peter from the water. You know, <coughs> Thakur's collection. Early in the morning, three o'clock, he will get up and pace in his room. And at that time, he used to see what is problem. He used to read the minds of all the devotees, where their obstacles. He could see, and he would pray for them. And seeing these old photos, he used to clap his hands. You will, you will feel that it, as, as if you, know, you are watching Sri Ramakrishna. And we try to bring it as best as, as possible. Where Holy Mother cooked with the, I told the, my guide, open the door. I want to take the picture. Here, under the wooden, under the staircase, there she used to cook. Then when she was cooking, <coughs> when she was cooking rice and dal, she will sit on the steps and you will repeat mantra. One of our Madhavanandaji used to say, 
how contemplative life and active life can be done simultaneously, Holy Mother demonstrated. Rice is boiling, dal is boiling, it takes 15, 20 minutes, half an hour, she is repeating mantra. How see? Karma and, and meditation, you can do side by side. Then, 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 Ram Lala, Ram Krishna's collection, Golden Varanushi, Shikman. I had a desire. When Sri Ramakrishna went to Banaras, he heard Rudra Bina, Mohesh Chandra Sarkar. I got the news that Bina is now in the Royal Palace Museum of Maharaja Baranushi. And Maharaja Baranushi is the president of Ram Krishna Mission, she our hospital. So we took Maharaja's permission, went to the museum, took the pictures of this Bina and showed it. You will find in this book. And Sri Ramakrishna went to the Moishya's house, that also I put it there. You know, we read, when you read the gospel or when you read the um, uh, Lila Prashanga, you cannot visualize it, but here you can visualize the Rudra Bina, exactly that Bina Thakur heard. Shikpana says, Shaitan Khadam. Shaitan Khadam is 97. Sri Ramakrishna went to. <clears throat> this is the Khadam. Khadam means sandal. Wooden sandal. But now it is in the silver glass case. In 1961, <laughs> I went to Vrindavan. At that time, it was a wooden sandal. I went with some monks, and they put it on our head. We touched it. 550 years old, we touched on our heads. And then, now they put it in a silver case so that it will not be destroyed. Another thing I did, I put each wall of Sri Ramakrishna. The room, he lived for 14 years. You can feel it. Still, still, when you go to the Occident, the moment you enter Sri Ramakrishna's room, you can feel it. It is a special place. In this book, you will find the <coughs> in, in Dokshinesha, there was a sweeper, Roshik. Father, I am an untouchable, I cannot touch you. So many people come, devotees, <coughs> is there any hope for me? In an ecstatic mood, Sri Ramakrishna says, you will see me at the time of death. So the tulsi monks, the tulsi plant and the grove and the courtyard, I went there in 1977, I took the picture. The Thwar Sri Ramakrishna appeared in front of the sweeper, just before his death. Jogodamba, M, sorry, Mothur's wives, that picture, I got it. Sri Ramakrishna took his dysentery and suffered for six months. Those pictures are so valuable, valuable. Then Gopal Irma's house, where Sri Ramakrishna went in Kamarhati. I still remember, it is 27 December 1970. I just came from Mayabhuti. And I was taking pictures. At the time, I was working for Ramakrishna Biography in pictures. I'm supposed to come to Hollywood. <coughs> so I was finishing my work. And I went there. The hall, the, I saw the door was locked. So I, I asked the neighbor, oh, it is, the house is under litigation. Lawsuit is going on. If you want to go inside, you'll have to need the permission from the high court. I can I could. I went to Bombay Photo Stores manager. I took him there and we <clears throat> took the 
um, I push the window. That is a, some kind of wood is there, some kind of plywood. Pushed it, took the manager out, and took the photographs of his room, and then came out. He was telling, you are a robber monk. <laughs> I am a robber monk. I have to take the picture of this room. <coughs> then that house is demolished, is gone. I am the last person who took the pictures of Gopal Irma, where she had vision of Krishna and all those things. Sri Ramakrishna was there. And I remember that day my father died. What kind of carriage Sri Ramakrishna went, Hagnit carriage, European boy, that is with that one in this collection. Sunset in Dokshineshwar. I ran to take the sunset, because seeing that sunset, Sri Ramakrishna used to cry, Mother, another day is gone in vain, still thou art not revealed unto me. I took that picture from Panchavuti, the sunset. You know, these memories will come to you. Sunset, monumental leaks, men, women, that's the original that tomorrow. Another thing, when Sri Ramakrishna gave Shonnas his 16 <coughs> disciples, the ochre cloth and rosary, we got original. Latu Maharaj had that ochre cloth and the rosary which Sri Ramakrishna gave, they are now in Varanasi or Dvita Ashrama. In 1977, I took that photograph. That you will find here. Ramakrishna gave the ochre cloth and the rosary. Very historical. Sri Ramakrishna's doctors. <laughs> I shall tell you interesting. Sri Ramakrishna, when he developed cancer, no money. Sri Ramakrishna told Baladam that, Baladam, I don't want you to eat food from subscription. You pay for my diet. At that time, some, you know, tapioca and barley and milk, and only liquid food can Sri Ramakrishna eat. Baladam said, sir, I shall provide. Then he asked, Shurendra Nath Shen, Shurendra, these, my jabuchis are all poor. You pay for my rent, 80 rupees per month. All right, sir. Nurse, Sri Ramakrishna had 12 nurses, all 12 young disciples. Who will cook? Holy Mother. Doctors, all best doctors in Calcutta, they want to serve Sri Ramakrishna because they will get, they will be famous, they will get more patients. <laughs> If you are a doctor of the president of the United States, I shall go to you. <laughs> so how Sri Ramakrishna tactfully manage everything that I put those doctor's pictures there. My time is over, I think. Yeah, anyhow, I want you to say something, very much great things. Why? Then Thakur's mementos, they are so important to me. Do you know why? <coughs> Those mementos will prove that Sri Ramakrishna's historicity. And Janja Ramakrishna's photo, Marlene Mahat Ramakrishna's room, Mother's Gospel, four vital questions. Anyhow, <coughs> I told you that how this book came into existence, and you will see it. I will not have to tell everything. And Sri Ramakrishna's each disciple, 49 disciples I found out. Those people who read in the gospel, who are they? You can see them. So these are the things you will find in this book. And finally I tell you, it will help your meditation. Akbar undoubtedly, there is no doubt about it. And I Always tell people, those who are initiated or devotees, please buy this book because it will give you the company of Thakur.
We want to see him. We want to know him. We want to be with, with him. Thank you. Um stapakaya dharma isa sarva dharma sarupine avatara varishtaya ramakrishna yate nama. I bow down to Sri Ramakrishna, who established the universal religion, who is the embodiment of all religions, who <coughs> is the who is the foremost among all the avatars. I bow down to him again and again. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace, 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 and all. As you know, Mahaj Yogananda, why you announce? Closing huh? song. Oh, closing song. OK. <laughs>
thank you very much, Maharaj, for this wonderful narration, the background of this wonderful book, Ramakrishna and his divine life and pictures. As we know, when we contemplate on divinity, it awakens our divinity. That's the idea. We have this wonderful book here today that's tangible. It's a tangible form of spirituality. The revered Maharaj will be signing books outside after this talk, here, after everything is over. So you can purchase the book from the shop outside, and then Maharaj will sign it there. And we also have a lot of pictures out there, plenty of pictures. Yeah. They're for free. Take them away. Thank you, Maharaj. And thank you, Devahuti and uh, Devahuti's husband, for the wonderful song. Thank you. Heather and David. Heather and David. It's such a wonderful name, Devahuti. You want to make Next week, our speaker will be Swami Sarvadevananda. His topic is three paths of exit. Last week, he spoke on two, two paths of exit. <laughs> now we get three paths of exit. And uh, coming up in Santa Barbara is a special retreat on Saturday, September 11th. This is a nun's retreat. Nuns from San Francisco and Hollywood and Santa Barbara are, are presenting a treat, retreat on Vedanta 102 putting it into practice. That's from uh, 10 in the morning to 3.15 in the afternoon. It's in person, also uh, streamed online. So that might be something to join in Santa Barbara next week. Thanks for coming. And please go to the bookshop to buy a copy of the book. Maharaj will be signing books outside the temple here. And uh, as Swami Satyamananda said, take some pictures. Thank you. Yeah.